So the rear end is grimy with grease, dirt, spider webs. Gonna hose it down, then hit it with a degreaser. Essentially, I'm prepping the housing for gloss black POR15. POR15 will stop any rust process and prevent any further spreading of corrosion. I've got specific cleaners and prep solutions coming designed for POR15 applications, but they weren't here yet the day I pulled the axles. So I'm going to use acetone. What I like about acetone is it's a powerful degreaser and leaves no residue and evaporates rather quickly. Highly flammable though, so use it outside. right off. Wear goggles. You don't want this shit in your eyes. Be bad. Now that the major grime is off, I can pull the axles, get the brake line off, the protector for the brake line. brake line shield is held on by four long bolts and two short bolts. There's also four steel sleeves and four rubber grommets. Not all of the bolts are the same length. Good to know. Any of you guys like horses? I like horses. Saw horses. This just makes it a lot easier to work on and in and around and top, bottom, all over. So, do some prep on it, pull the axles, and eventually put, apply POR15 to it. Get yourself a slide hammer. You can either rent them or they're about 40 bucks at the Made in China store. Get a couple of your factory lugs. Thread that on good now. Coming out good. Easy. That's just one hit. I've already got a good half inch. It's a centimeter for non-US people. And out you go. Two hits. That simple. The axle goes in this order. You got your flange. There's this little plate here. Obviously matches up with these holes here. Then you've got the bearing. Well, then there's, of course, the dust shield. The bearing. You've got two thin aluminum gaskets or spacer type things here. And that is what it looks like. And on the left side of the car, this was a little different story. I couldn't get the little hub piece off because these screws in here are just rusted in good. So, let's still use the puller. I've just discovered the factory lug is too short though to put the little adapter on. So, I've got these other lugs from uh, my Hayashi racing wheels that I'm going to have to use. The threaded portion is longer. So, that's what I'm going to use for the left axle. Actually, 
actually expected this side to give me more grief. This is the side the brake drum wouldn't come off. This is the side I ruined the screws here inside the hub. Take the hub out. Everything's just all rusted on this side. I'm very happy this came out easy. <laughs> Got a lot of corrosion on this bearing. So the differential just needs a nice coat of POR15 gloss black doesn't need to be disassembled. The differentials as tight as a 20 year old nun on Sunday. And once I put a liter of gear oil in there, it's going to be as slippery as the same nun watching a Johnny Depp movie. Last time I worked on the differential, I used acetone. I had um, some POR15 special cleaner. They call it Marine Clean. I had it on order. It wasn't here yet. But I needed to get something done on the car. You know, I couldn't just sit idle waiting for this stuff. My time to work on the car is kind of spread thin. So today I used the Marine Clean, which is here now. And I gotta say, it's really good stuff. I didn't do too good of a job with the acetone, just knowing that I was going to have the Marine Clean here eventually. I think I have a new favorite cleaner. Marine Clean by POR15. Amazing stuff. Non-flammable, biodegradable, and it kicks ass. This is POR15's metal prep. They want you to apply it above 70 degrees. I'm lucky today. It's a nice, warm, sunny day. They say to leave it wet for 30 minutes. So, that's going to be boring, but it'll be worth it. Well, this is after POR 15's Marine Clean and Metal Prep. It's looking pretty darn good and ready for the coat of POR 15. Got the POR 15 going on. Follow every direction. No shortcuts. They recommend a certain cleaner. Use it. Found this out the hard way while I was painting my battery tray. When I painted the backing plates, for the rear brakes. I uh, did the second coat the next day. You're not supposed to do that. Second coat's supposed to go on while the paint is just a little bit tacky. So, my second coat didn't go on too well. They also say thin coats. Get it too thick, won't flow out, gets blotchy. When I'm doing something new, like applying POR15, try to do it something that's not gonna be seen much. You know, there's a learning curve going on. The first thing I ever powder coated was my front brake rotors. Wait till you see those. Oh my god, you guys are gonna give me shit about that. I thought about powder coating the differential. It can be done. I can do it. Got access to an oven that's large enough to cure it. It's just heavy and I gotta lug it around. And First I gotta bead blast it and use a prep solution. This was way easier. Now POR15 is really good at stopping the rust process, so this is gonna look just fine, especially under the car. The only people that are gonna see this thing are the people that watch the video. A few warnings about POR15. If you try to recap your can, you will never get that lid on again. If you have poured it out and there's some in the rim, it makes great cement. Go down to your local hardware store, get some, or paint store, get some empty cans and pour the balance that you haven't used yet back into a new can. Empty cans are cheap. Just get a few. All right, it's not bad. So the way POR15 behaves, even if you put it on with a brush and there's brush strokes, it flows in to cover that brush stroke so that you have a nice even coating across the surface of whatever you're painting. It's really cool stuff. All right, well, the paint's finally dried on the differential. Um, of course, the back side, I was expecting there to be some spots that didn't quite get enough paint. So I flipped it over and I'm going to finish it off indoors here. 
I brought the show indoors because it's, you know, it's getting dark. Gotta hit that blue spot. As I applied the first coat of POR 15, first and second coat, to the top side, I was dipping my paintbrush straight into the can here. Cardinal sin. Only thing you should be dipping in the can is a stirring stick. Stirred, not shaken. The theory is that there's contaminants on the brush. Don't dip the brush in there. Always pour what you need into a separate container. Jeez, that's like 10 times what I need. This stuff goes a long way. The OR15 will be just like cement. You want to get all of this out of the lid rim. I want to recap ASAP. According to POR15's directions, you should take what you need out of the can and put it in a separate container. Recap your can right away. What I did earlier today... Bad. Alright, well let's finish up the backside on this thing. As you can see, I've been to the store. Got me some sponge brushes. Another thing that might not have been kosher, applying the POR15 in the sun. That was probably not good. POR15 does require a top coat if it's going to get hit by the sun. I mean, the differential isn't going to be hit by the sun, so not putting a top coat on it. I did let it sit there for most of the day, and it never dried until the sun went down. It just stayed warm and tacky all day long. And that's where we're going to close out this episode. Thank you, YouTubers, for watching my Mazda RX-3 restoration videos. Click subscribe, watch my previous episodes, and don't miss out on upcoming episodes. Upcoming videos include rear axle installation, rear end parts restoration, grinding broken bolts, painting over rust on the frame, front suspension reassembly, and much more. Peace out, brother.